Louise Fleming might just be now having a nice little glass of red uh, tonight because she has been in very, very uh, good company with our young Australian promising girls. The junior Billie Jean King Cup, the qualifiers in India in the last week to qualify us for the finals in Australia was numero uno right up the top. A former player, turned coach, turned commentator, did some great work with us across the Aussie summer. Lou, always great to have you back on the show. G'day, Brett. Yes, absolutely. And I am feeling good. And, yeah, I will have a glass of wine after this. I'll, <laughs> I'll get through this, the yes, chat yes. with you first. But, no, it's been a, a fantastic week and uh, so proud of the girls. Yeah, so just tell us a, a bit about uh, the sort of selection. I think there were three girls that made up the team. Yourself as the coach over in India, a lot of teams trying to qualify for the finals of the Billie Jean King Cup. We know the pros will step out uh, later this week, Australia doesn't have to do that. They've got through to the finals later in the year. But this is the next level down of our, our promising young talent. So tell us a bit about the three girls and just the format across uh, the last week, Lou. Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, Billie Jean King or the junior Billie Jean King Cup is under 16 years of age. We had three uh, 15-year-olds that were going um, yep. and that was uh, Lily Taylor and uh, Sarah Rokasuk and then one girl um, couldn't come, one of the 15-year-olds. So we actually had a very young and perhaps a, a little superstar on the rise with Emerson Jones. She's just 13 years of age. So really it, it just came down to, um, yeah, they, they select, you know, on the ITF rankings and yep. then just what they're, they've been doing lately. And then the format is around Robin. Uh, there's three matches up until that round robin and then it's a knockout from the quarterfinals. Uh, so quarterfinal semis and finals. And we were the number two seeds. The number one seed was Japan and Japan have a very good team. They have a really strong team in terms of ITF rankings and they're all 15 years of age and their best player has a ranking up around the, you know, the forties in the world, mm. um, and just quietly, they did very well last year in the main group. So they came second over uh, the finals in the world against everyone. So against uh, the US, against Russia, against everyone. Yep. Um, so, yeah, we, we were kind of up against it. And, uh, yeah, that's um, we kind of ran into them in the semifinals. Everything went really well up until we met, actually, Thailand in the third in our third round match um, in our quarter. So they were very tough. Um, you know, it's one thing every time I go there, Brett, yep. that the Asia region, the Asia kind of Oceania, they're really improving. They're getting stronger. Obviously, all these Asian teams come down, play the Australian Open. You know, they're getting a lot more experience and, and you can just see it. The quality of players is getting better and better. And did I read correctly, uh, fairly warm conditions, uh, Lou, for our young girls? Yeah, look, it was, I think that's the hardest thing. And obviously, we haven't had that sort of um, hot weather that many of the other Asian teams have had. You know, if you're coming from Thailand or Malaysia or Indonesia, then you're pretty comfortable with going to India. Yep. Um, but yeah, we've had, as we all know, we've we've had some pretty wet, uh, a wet season. So um, yeah, just that being able to acclimatise really quickly, um, that was one of the big things. And I, I must say, I take my hats off, um, you know, to our players, uh, Emerson, Sarah and Lily. They had to play in extreme conditions. The last day, the two singles players, which was Emerson uh, and Lily, they had to play in, in around 40 to 45 degree heat. And let me tell you, it's dry, it's hot. Mm. Uh, matches are going for two, two and a half, three hours. It, you know, it just becomes a mental battle, not, not only physical, but a real mental battle. And our girls just really stood up. It was amazing. So, so Lou, we've been, you know, obviously, it's, I, feel, I feel like it's a continuing discussion on our show. As so we just look at the ranks yep. of Australian tennis, you know, where's the next lot of talent coming from? You talk about the improved uh, Asia, Oceania region, and we just think worldwide yep. now. I mean, there are so many countries popping up, you know, producing tennis players that didn't years ago. So the competition's got even tougher. And I suppose we're all just looking, what what is what does that pa uh, talent pool actually look like? And you're a hell of a lot closer to that than what I am. Well, uh, you know, the last two years we, we've been slim pickings as far as we haven't seen our, our youngsters play that much because of COVID. So it, we, we've been in a bit of a bubble stuck over here in Australia Whilst a lot of the other countries have been able to travel and play ITF tournaments, we really haven't. So it was 
you know, it is a little bit, as, as far as we can place them, UTRs and a lot of those were put on hold. It was a little bit of an unknown. Um, but, but I can tell you, I was really encouraged uh, with the, the quality of play, um, by t- particularly by the two singles players. Lily Taylor, um, she's a tall girl. And her mentality is, is like a latent cure, just to hang in there, make a million balls. Yep. And she's got the athleticism of a Gail Monty. She's tall. She's oh. very athletic. She moves around the court incredibly well. You know, and so we just want those young players to keep tracking and keep improving. She's got a great serve, a lot of great qualities. And then you look at young Emerson Jones. She was a late call-up, just 13 years of age. You know, she's a foot shorter than the other girls out there on the court. You know, those years between 13 and 15, you're growing a lot. Uh, you're maturing a lot. But Emerson, um, yeah, she was impressive. And I, I see a lot of really good qualities from this young young girl. Great physical um, athlete. Just the intensity, just the way she moves and prepared to fight. I think we could have um, a couple of little champions coming through in, in our younger um, brigade, that's for sure. And she'll okay. have an opportunity okay. to stay in Asia, yep. to right. stay in India and play in the 14s now, Emerson. Yeah, nice. Uh, we're going to track all of that. Um, I, I like, I like, yep. We'd love to hear some really good positivity about uh, our young players uh, coming through, Lou. I really appreciate some insights on that. Uh, their names are old jot down. We look forward to the finals uh, later in the year. And, and uh, let's get you back on the show uh, very, very soon because you're doing a lot of great work in the world of tennis, as we know. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, mate. Thank you. I'm going to let you have that little glass of wine. Uh, Feet up. Uh, She's had a big week over there in India. Uh, Lou Fleming uh, leading our uh, young junior Billie Jean King Cup team to get through to the finals uh, later on this year.